she has style, she has flair, and now she's here to talk about her legacy, her advocacy, and her new lifetime project. Please welcome to DBL, the fabulous Fran Drescher. Yay! you and I love that you is that an unmade bed now I feel like I can relate to you I can finally relate to Fran Drescher <laughs> I rushed I rushed in and I didn't notice what was going on in the background bad on me no relatable it. It, yes. it looks fabulous and comfy yes it okay does. so let's get to it because a lot of actors are concerned about the use of artificial intelligence in Hollywood so as the president of <laughs> SAG after honey yes you are <laughs> what do you think is the best way to regulate AI uh, well, we aim to put a lot of barricades around it, to tell you the truth. I don't know what is wrong with our species that we keep trying to, you know, take away uh, our livelihoods, take away the human experience, hurt the planet. All of that is very weird. And I think that at large, this is a very defective species that we all happen to be a part of. And I don't subscribe to uh, putting people out of work. I think that what's happening in the entertainment industry is a microcosm of what's happening all across America, uh, whereby workers are being replaced by artificial intelligence. And what is that about exactly? And why are we determined to get rid of the human interactive experience? It's sick. Mm -hmm. And uh, putting people out of work is also uh, negative energy. It's not, uh, it doesn't have a long vision to it. And as president, I intend to do everything in my power to protect our members. And hopefully that will impact, um, you know, all the labor moving across America, um, members of the AFL-CIO, all, all labor, not just in the entertainment industry. Good but it's you. something that we should all be very concerned about. Good well, for uh, you. You know, before I get to my question, Fran Drescher, 2024. Yeah. <laughs> I will say that, I mean, I just, I totally agree. Uh, but let's get to your career because it's been amazing. Over the years, you have cemented yourself as a gay icon. Now, did you start out to represent, like, did you want this to, like, represent the LGBTQ community with the nanny, or did this just happen organically? Well, you know, I created the series uh, with Peter Jacobson, and uh, who is now my gay ex-husband, by the way. <laughs> and we executive produced it. And I like writing things that always have, through humor, uh, social impact. So, for example, the global message of the nanny was it doesn't matter what you look like or what you feel like, it's what's in your heart that yes. it counts. The global message of happily divorced, which was about me and my relationship with my gay ex-husband, is about everybody has the right to live an authentic life. I'm, I had all the writers always write towards that message. And I think that, uh, you know, I'm a Buddhist and, um, if Buddhism could be put down to one word and you don't have to study it, you don't have to go anywhere, you just have to practice compassion in everything that you do, uh, you'll be living a Buddhist philosophy. I love that. So I think that I have always felt an affinity towards the marginalization of that particular community. And obviously being in the industry that I'm in, um, you know, I have very dear friends. I was out there uh, fighting for uh, same-sex marriage through the um, uh, ACLU before anybody was really talking about it. Uh, and Man, look uh, where we are now. I That's... feel like it's just important that if you don't apply your celebrity to the greater good, then you're really wasting it. That's why we love you, Fran. You're always fighting for everybody else and why we're drawn to you. Um, I gotta talk, uh -huh. though, about Dawn because I'm a huge fan of books by V.C. Andrews. So Dawn is a limited series based on books by the one and the only V.C. Andrews. We meet your character, Agnes, in the second episode. So I have to ask, I loved Flowers in the Attic. Is Dawn anything like Flowers in the Attic? Oh, it definitely is. I mean, it's, you know, it's it's very suspense-filled. It's got a, uh, 
a relationship that uh, may be, uh, you know, not really something that is, that may be frowned upon. Uh, it's got a crazy grandma. It's got <laughs> ghosts. I mean, it's something that I'm not usually asked to participate in. And I was delighted when I was offered this by Lifetime because obviously, you know, V.C. Andrews is one of the most popular authors of pop culture. And, um, and, and this character is just so fun. And even though I also am part of the plot in terms of you know, getting in the way of the lead character, um, I think that she also is a bit of a comedy relief and a lot of fun to watch. And she's like a frustrated actress, so I kind of wear different hats, uh, Ooh, rehearsing can... different characters, right? also being the landlady. You I could think, do it all. Yeah, I think we're gonna have a viewing party. We can't <laughs> wait. Fran, it's always such it a. It airs on July eighth, and uh, it's it's a limited series of four episodes, and I urge everybody to watch. We're gonna watch. We can't wait. In fact, DBL Nation. Part one of VC Andrews Dawn premieres Saturday, July 8th on Lifetime. Fran, congratulations. It's just so wonderful awesome to have always. you on. Thank and you. I just wanted to ask you if, you know, your viewers would be interested in coming to the Fran Drescher uh, Masterclass Health Summit for the first time on the East Coast in the Hamptons on July 29th. And if you are, I'll be there all day working it. And it's a great learning experience. Well, ask them in the Thank you, Fran. That's incredible. Thank you. They better go there. Thank you, Fran. We'll be right back.